What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the CFBPod.com show. I'm Donovan White. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube if you haven't. Follow me on Twitter at DonnieMac98. Give you college football, only college football, all offseason throughout this year. Um, and, and it's maybe it's a little early to be talked about Wisconsin. If you saw the title of the video, if you see the, the, the thumbnail. But Wisconsin is a team that I've been intrigued with ever since Luke Fickle was hired about this time last year, maybe a little longer than that. And the video is aptly, you know, named on the on the thumbnail, the Wisconsin way, which we'll get into. But I just kind of want to recap a little bit and give my thoughts going forward. The Badgers last year, last season, finished the season, Luke Fickle's first season at seven and six. They ended with a close bowl game loss to LSU, 35 to 31, in a game that I don't think many people expected to be that high of scoring a game. Uh, they only averaged 23 points per game the lowest in 19 years. And, and from an offensive production standpoint, they have to replace Braylon Allen and Tanner Mordecai, two of their um, leading, you know, st- leaders in statistical categories, specifically touchdowns and, and their main driving force of their offense. And so uh, the the reason Wisconsin intrigues me so much as a program is because they were at a level of Big Ten supremacy, not saying they were at the Ohio State level or, or Michigan level currently going to the playoffs, but they were consistently 10 and 2, 11 and 1 you know, fighting for a Big Ten championship team. And and I want to see what it's going to take to get back to that level, specifically this year, in a year or two where the Big Ten is ever-changing, where the the Big Ten is adding teams that are are at this stage at a higher level than Wisconsin that they're going to have to go play. And so I look at Wisconsin specifically and I say, okay, I know what their defense is going to be year in and year out. Other than an off year, their defense is going to be one of the standards of the Big Ten. And I'll talk about that in different videos. And, and, and you know that this season it's going to be the same, especially some of the big-time transfers they brought in because they brought in some great players, specifically at linebacker, which I'll talk about in another video. It's their offense that has always seemed to hold them back, whether it was last year, whether it was years past where they had a great rushing offense, but they just weren't modernized enough to succeed in today's college ball world. Wisconsin has never hit that end goal of of consistently winning Big Ten championships or consistently beating big time teams, um, whether it's in a Big Ten championship or in a big time bowl game or the idea of going to a college ball playoff, specifically, in my opinion, because their offense. And so I kind of want to look at what their offense is shaping up to be in 2024 with the personnel they have and just kind of talk about that potential. So quarterback, I think, is is the biggest question mark, right? Tanner Mordecai graduates, didn't have the success that I, I honestly thought he had coming over from SMU. You could look at his stats from SMU, you could look at his play style, and, and whether it was injuries, whether it was the scheme wasn't fully ready for him yet, the players weren't re- you know, the players around them weren't the best, whatever you want to call it. The Tanner Mordecai experience was, I, I think, not up to what a lot of Wisconsin fans and, and what, what I thought it was going to be. But now you look in what they have currently. Tyler Van Dyke comes over from Miami, Florida, He's looking to return to his 2021 form, right? He's had some up and down years uh, since then. 2021 was the year he had that year, and people were already talking about him as a future first-round pick. Obviously, that was short-lived talk. But in 2021, he threw for 25 touchdowns, only six interceptions. The experience alone of him, of being a multi-year starter, is going to help the quarterback room develop, and it's going to help Phil Longo be able to call plays better, right? Because you have an experienced quarterback. I'm not saying he's a world beater, but you have a quarterback who has done big time things and big time moments, albeit inconsistent in the past few years. But you have a guy that has experience making those big time throws, running an offense, being an offense where he doesn't have much support, where now, as we'll get into it, he does have more support around him in the Wisconsin offense. Not guaranteed he's a starter. Obviously, you can always have injuries or positional battles. You still have Nick Evers, the four-star transfer from Oklahoma, who's super athletic, who's got tremendous arm talent. Um, but uh, you know, reports were that he struggled to grasp the offense and and kind of that shift. Which again, he's a young kid who's 18, 19 years old, a new offense, totally understandable. But he's still in contention for that starting job as well. You got Braden Locke as well, who started three games for the Badgers when Tanner Mordecai was hurt. Had mixed results at best. I think Wisconsin fans, you would agree with that. Um, so there's still a handful of other individuals that are competing to start a quarterback. But by all indications, Tyler Van Dyke is, is going to be the starting quarterback for Wisconsin. And Badgers fans, let me know in the comments. Excited for that? Are you, you know, a little nervous? Are you completely down in the dumps? You know, wrong portal pickup? Let me know what you think. In the backfield is where Wisconsin, the, the, the Wisconsin standard, 
right? The Wisconsin way, like the video, the thumbnail was titled, is, is where it starts to shine a bit. You have six-year senior Ches Malusi coming back. Dynamic running back can easily be their workhorse. His, I don't want to say been overshadowed by Braylon Allen, but Braylon Allen was such a special back in his time at Wisconsin that, you know, Ches Malusi got to shine in those two back situations. And so now he gets to be the workhorse. Granted, he is coming off of a devastating lower leg injury um, where he broke his leg earlier in, I want to say, September against Purdue. Um, you also have Tawi Walker coming from Oklahoma. He was their backup at Oklahoma. 500 yards rushing, seven touchdowns as the backup. So you have those two right there that project, assuming Malusi is healthy enough and, and, and looks like his normal form or close to. Those seem to be your one-two punch at running back. And you still have depth, too. You have Jackson Acker, who also got some time last year. There's been talk about him having a potential move to H back to get some more speed out in the perimeter, get some more you know creativity going in the offense. And then you have Darian Dupree and Dylan Jones, both four stars that are coming in as freshmen. Um, and, and if there's one thing we've seen in the college football world, uh, no team should be afraid to play freshmen, especially at running backs, if they are ready to do so. Uh, you can look at Penn State with Katron Allen and, and Nick Singleton, and it's turned out pretty well for their offense um, in, in times and for those two individuals as well. So you look at quarterback, you've got experience, you've got running back room, you've got experience and talent and speed, different styles of running backs as well. You then move on to wide receiver. And I'll get to O-line. I jumped around a little bit, but I'll get to O-line here in a second because I think it's important to end with them. Wide receiver, you got Bryson Green coming back with 32 catches for nearly 500 yards, a pair of touchdowns that he caught as well. Will Pauling, who ended up being their top slot receiver, top receiver in general, in my opinion, 74 catches for 837 yards and six touchdowns. So you've got your two guys right there that are kind of your main stars of the show. You've also got Tyrell Henry coming from Michigan State. Had about 200 yards, and I want to say one or two touchdowns this time at Michigan State. So not not a otherworldly wide receiver at Michigan State, but still has time to develop. And you've got other characters there as well that I didn't name. Tight end is where things are a little thin. Um, you know, you love to see a great pass catching tight end at Wisconsin, but oftentimes that's not always what you'll get. You'll get the more, you'll get the guy that's more suited for their blocking scheme, even though it is changing. Like we've said, like I've said, scheme wise, they're still Wisconsin and they're always going to rely on that blocking tight end. Uh, Tucker Ashcraft is, is the leading candidate to start. You've got another guy, uh, Jackson McGowan, former top 25 tight end in the class of 2023 was a former Luke Fickle commit at Cincinnati. And so you look at those skill positions and you have some room there to work with. Not the best in the Big Ten. Um, specifically, I think tight end holds them back. But you have a couple of guys at wide receiver that can be those main um, um, out pushes for Tyler Van Dyke or whoever else is going to be there at quarterback. O-line is where I really wanted to look out for Wisconsin. You're returning your left tackle in Jack Nelson. And, and this is projecting. I, I, I believe these are going to be the, the, the starters for next season. But as I'll mention in a second, they have a ton of depth. Um, and experience at O-line, so some of these could mix and match. But Jack Nelson's returning at left tackle. Joe Bruner projects at left guard. He took first-team uh, left guard snaps during the bowl practice. We didn't see any time in the bowl game. Uh, they're returning Jake Renfro at center, who was finally healthy in a full offseason. Uh, being healthy for him is going to help his development even more, help that Wisconsin line, offensive line um, gel and start to work well together. Uh, right guard, they're returning Joe Huber, who played left guard, but I think a lot of projections have him flipping from left to right. Uh, might stay at left, who knows, but either way, you've got one of your guards returning. And then right tackle, they're also returning Riley Malman. So Wisconsin is, is in essence, returning four or five starters. You could debatably say five starters, depending on how you look at Joe Bruner uh, with his kind of ascension and climb in, in the bowl practices. And, and so really with Wisconsin, I look at it, I go, okay, the Wisconsin way of offense has been that power style running football with a little bit of play action sprinkled in there, never really going to get into the deep throws, right? It, it wasn't really the Wisconsin way to do things on offense. Obviously, Luke Fickle and his staff are changing that scheme slowly, you know, one day, one week, one game at a time, one offseason at a time. And I look at it and I go, OK, they have the offensive line returning with depth and talent and experience. They have a deep, talented running back room with different styles, power backs, speed, uh, third down backs. They have a lot of different pieces and parts that are room. They have an experienced quarterback that needs to show more consistency, but experience and talent. No, nobody is going to pretend that Tyler Van Dyke isn't, isn't talented. And you could debate, is it, was it the cast around that he had around him at Miami? Was it his own fault? There's a lot of different reasons, but he's experienced and talented. And they have weapons at wide receiver. 
they're going to have a consistent top defense. Their offense is what needs to progress more to take their program over the top. And specifically, this offense needs to transform a bit. They have the offensive line to have the running game that they want to have, to have the pass protection that they want to have. It's going to come down to, does the quarterback, the offensive coordinator, and the skill players, are they all on the same page? Are they all on the same page as buying into what the – program could look like excuse me, in terms of what the scheme could look like are they on on the other same page of understanding the offense is the quarterback Tyler Van Dyke whoever that may be playing consistently keeping the game turnover free are the receivers getting open to make catches or is the offensive line blocking well enough in pass protection are they blocking well enough and creating lanes for Malusi and and and, and Akers and and others to set up the pass. If, if you can't run it, vault Wisconsin, it's going to be a long day. You look more like Iowa's offense uh, than you do Wisconsin's offense. And, and you look and you look at Wisconsin and go, okay, let's say all these things happen for them. Let's say the offensive line continues to develop and play well. And those starters uh, develop another year and they go from there. Do they, you know, do their running backs show out like they should? Does Tyler Van Dyke, does their quarterback, whoever it may be, show that consistency and, and actually become a top quarterback in the big 10, you start to look at Wisconsin's schedule and, and I'll be honest, it's not an easy schedule. They open up with Western Michigan and I'll get into a full season preview of and prediction of Wisconsin, but I just want to talk about their offense and what can lead them with. Cause again, I think their defense is going to be there. They open up with Western Michigan. You've got to win there. You've got a South Dakota game win there week three. They play Alabama home against Alabama. And I think this is where, I don't want to say a defining moment for Wisconsin will be because it's week three. There's no such thing really as a defining moment in week three in this age of the 12 team college ball playoff era. But you look at that game and you go, okay, home, probably a night game, primetime atmosphere of Wisconsin, Alabama, an Alabama team that just lost Nick Saban, that was gutted by the portal, that loses essentially every single starter on the offensive line, their top receivers, multiple stars on defense. Uh, to the portal or to the NFL, a vulnerable Alabama team going into a hostile environment. That game right there can say a lot about Wisconsin because if you win that game or you keep it close, and there's, there's no such thing as moral victories, but against Alabama sometimes there is. You win that game, you keep it close, the rest of your schedule looks like this. At USC, who say what you want about Lincoln Riley, but USC does not look ready in the trenches for Big Ten football and specifically – for Wisconsin football, Wisconsin offensive line and defensive line. They don't look ready for it. So that's not only a winnable game for Wisconsin, it's probably a game you'd expect to win if you're Wisconsin. You got Purdue, Rutgers, Northwestern, four games in a row right there that are all winnable for Wisconsin. And then you really get in the meat of it. You've got Penn State at home at Iowa, who you know looks to have a different style of team with Cade McNamara, hopefully coming back healthy and, and coming back to some shape and form of what he was. You play Oregon with Dylan Gabriel against Dan Lanning. It's a tough game at Nebraska, Minnesota. This Wisconsin team, if their offense is ready to make the jump that they need to make, is very capable of winning 10 to 11 games on this schedule. I think Oregon is the game that is really the toughest one for them. I know it's at home, um, but that's a that's the one game I look at and go, okay, I don't I don't know if Wisconsin can pull that off just yet. But you're telling me if, if Wisconsin's offense is firing on even 80% of the cylinders, they can be, they can absolutely beat Alabama. They can absolutely, they should beat USC. They can absolutely beat Penn state and Iowa. And so you start to just put these things together and go, what is Wisconsin building towards in 2024? And, and you, and you look and you don't panic if you have another type of seven and six season. Cause again, it's just, it, it's just as possible that they could lose to Alabama use lose to USC Penn State, Iowa, Oregon, and right there you're already at five losses, and it could be another seven and five season, but it's so close to being that 10 and 2, 11 and 1 Wisconsin team that goes to play in a potential Big Ten championship, depending on how everything else sorts it out, that potentially gets a playoff spot in a 12 team playoff where everything's up for grabs. And so I think Wisconsin fans, you need to be specific in your focus of watching and listening this spring about how's the development of the quarterback play going? How is the development of in, in really that kind of outside skill set of receivers and tight ends and running backs? How are they adapting to this ever-changing offense? Um, and, if, and if those things start to piece together, Wisconsin's got a great chance to get back to where they were. And I think a lot of Wisconsin fans are waiting for that. I think Luke Fickle is built for that. He builds programs or built it at Cincinnati and he built them up to what they were when he left. 
And I think there's no reason that Wisconsin can't have the, the, the same type of process, knowing their program history, knowing what they have talent wise, knowing um, what they have coming through the portal, um, especially on defense. Like I, I mentioned, I'll, I'll talk about in another video. So very intrigued by Wisconsin. I said kind of the same things last year. I think I was a little head over heels, uh, but this is a Wisconsin team that has a tough schedule, but has a lot of potential for 2024, especially with the way the college ball landscape is shifting. Um, so I'll be sure to do more videos on Wisconsin. I'll get a full season preview and prediction on them going here soon. Again, make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at DonnieMac98. If you haven't, uh, we're going to be breaking down plenty of other teams and conferences as we go up throughout the offseason with myself and a couple other hosts of the show. So make sure you're tuned in. Hit the notifications on so you can get you're in touch with whatever we're doing, whether it's live or, or videos that we put out. Um, and you can check out our website as well, cfbpod.com. Um, for the show and for myself, I am Donovan White, and I will see you all next time.